suppose we wanted to find the area under the curve f of x equals 2. Well, not really a curve, it's just kind of a flat line. But to, and the interval between a equals 1 and b equals 3. Well, this is an easy problem. Of course, it's, this is just a rectangle. All you need to do is find the height and the width of this rectangle, which is 3 and 2. And the area, of course, is just the multiplication of those two to get 6 as your area. That's easy. Um, let's make that a little diff more difficult. Suppose we wanted to find the area under the curve f of x equals x. Well, again, it's not really a curve. It's kind of a straight line. But it's slanted this time, so it's a little bit more difficult. But still easy. We could just separate it into, say, a triangle and a rectangle. And pretty easy to, to um, using some basic geometry to find that area. But let's say we wanted to find the area under a function f of x equals x squared plus 1 on the interval um, between x equals 1 and x equals 3. So that would look kind of like this. And this would be hard. Um, it'd be hard at least assuming that you don't, if you're not going to use calculus, this is hard. And that's this is why we need calculus, because it's easy to find the area under straight lines. But when you get a curved function, now finding the area under that becomes hard. And for a lot of applications, finding the area under curve is very important and very helpful thing to find. And if you if it if it's not a straight line, then um, that's where calculus becomes really handy. Now we're not going to get into calculus today, but we will um, discuss the Riemann sum, which will give us an estimate for the area under the curve, but it will also serve as a foundation um, for us to to um, arrive at integral calculus. We we found that finding the area of rectangles was easy in our in the previous slide. So let's stick with what we know, right? We know rectangles are easy, so let's stick with those. Let's separate this. We can divide this into four different rectangles. So let's um, let's do that using a right endpoint estimate just to start off. So what we're doing here is we're dividing it into these four different regions. And in order to estimate the area under the curve, we can just find the area um, shown by these four rectangles. And we call this a right endpoint estimate because for this interval here, we're going to use the value at the right of it um, for the height of our rectangle. So we call this a right endpoint. And in this case, we have four rectangles, so we're going to call that f um, our n value, n equals 4 for four rectangles. So first of all, let's define our x values that we're looking at here. So we got x0, x1, x2, x3, x4. So we got four rectangles, but we end up having five different x values that, that are going to be of interest in this case. And um, again, our goal here is to find, we're just trying to find the area of these rectangles, which is, it's pretty easy because the area of a rectangle isn't, isn't too hard. So um, just to be clear, let's, um, let's determine the value at each of these, at each of these x values. So uh, um, x0 is going to, the x value is going to be 1, x1 is going to be 3 halves, x2 is 2, x3 is 5 halves, and x4 is 3. A little clutter down there, but just to just to be clear on what um, values that we're using. So in order to find the width, in order to find the area of these rectangles, we're going to need to know the width of them. So we're going to call that delta x. Delta x is the width of one of our rectangles. And you can see in this case, we could simply find delta x by taking x sub 1 and subtracting x sub 0. That's going to give us delta x. And our delta x for the second rank rectangle is going to be the same thing. It'll be um, because we divided this into four e rectangles of equal width, um, but we can also define it as x2 minus x1. We could define it also as x3 minus x2 for the width of this third rectangle, or define it as x4 minus x3 for the width of the fourth rectangle. Um, more generally, and the more common approach, is just to take the whole width of that interval, which in this case would be x sub 4 minus x sub 0, and divide that by the number of rectangles, 4. Since we divided it evenly, that's going to give us delta x, the width of each rectangle.
So uh, the width of each rectangle is going to um, stay the same because that's how we divided it. But of course, the height of each rectangle is going to be different. And er in order to find the area of these rectangles, the height is the is the next thing that we're going to need. So let's look at f of x sub 1. The f of x sub 1 is going to give us that height of that first rectangle. And that and you can see we're, we're just taking the function value at x sub 1. And some, since we're using right endpoints, we're using um, x sub 1, which is the, the x value on the right edge of that rectangle. So f of x sub 1 is going to be f of 3 halves because x sub 1 is 3 halves. And if we plug that into our function, which is x squared plus 1, we get 3 halves squared, quantity squared plus 1, which is equal to 9 fourths plus 1, which is equal to 13 fourths. So now we have the width of our first rectangle and we have the height of our first rectangle, and we could um, now, and we can calculate it. But before we do that, let's look at the height of of the other rectangles. And um, you may want to try this yourself before um, I go ahead and, and go through the next one. So f of x sub two is going to be five if you if you crunch through that function. F of x sub three is going to end up being twenty nine fourths, and f of x sub four is going to be ten. So now we have the width and the height of each of our rectangles. Um, but before we move on to to add up all these areas, let's um let's simplify this um let's clean this up a little bit because we've got we got a lot going on here. So if we want to find the to the area of all these rectangles, we're going to go ahead and call that r sub four. So r sub four means a right endpoint esti estimate with using four rectangles. And we're going to say that's going to be equal to a sub 1, the area of our first rectangle, plus a sub 2, the area of our second rectangle, plus a sub 3, the area of our third rectangle, plus a sub 4, the area of our fourth rectangle. And now we can, we can multiply the base in the, or the, the width and the height of each of these rectangles to find r sub 4. So our first rectangle is going to be a sub 1 is going to be delta x times f of x sub 1. Our a sub 2 is going to be delta x times f of x sub 2, the width times the height. Our a sub 3 is going to be delta x times f of x sub 3, and our, our area of our fourth rectangle is going to be delta x times f of x sub 4. So we can make this a little bit simpler by just, we notice there's a delta x term in each of these, so we can pull that out to the front and just say that r sub 4 is equal to delta x times um, the addition of all these heights. So now we can we have those heights that we calculated earlier, so, and we have delta x. We can go ahead and plug everything in here. We get 0 0.5 times 13 fourths plus 5 plus 29 fourths plus 10. And we can just crunch through that math. And we end up with 102 over 8, which is final answer. 12.75. So there it is. There's a right endpoint estimate for the area under this curve. Now, do you suppose that this estimate that we came up with is an overestimate or an underestimate? If you chose over, you're correct. And hopefully it's clear from the graph that the area in the in the orange here is includes some area that's not actually underneath the curve. It, in, it, in, it incorporates all the area that is under the curve, but then adds these little extra corners right here. So yes, it's, it is going to be an overestimate. And it, the specific reason it's an overestimate is because this is an increasing function. If you have an increasing function um, such as this, then a right endpoint estimate is going to give you an overestimate. Now, um, it's going to be helpful to us to actually make a more general description of this of this um, area here, and by by converting it into a summation. So we can convert this into a specific sum here. This um, we take this this um, second row down here. We def we defined our r sub four, and we can define r sub four as in summation notation, which is just a little bit cleaner way to do it, and you will see later it's, it's, it helps us. So we call this um, summation notation. We're going from, we're summing up um, 
these heights where I we're cycling I through from I equals one to four. So we're going to sum up f of x sub one plus f of x sub two plus f of x sub three plus f of x sub four and multiplying each, all of those by delta x. So that's what this summation notation um, stands for. It's just a simpler way to express the the longer function up here. All right. So there's our summation notation. We're gonna and we're gonna kind of build with that um, from here. So let's go. Um, and and just kind of start with that on our next slide. So this is where we left off. R sub four is this is this sum from i equals one to four. Now it's helpful to get into this into this um, summation notation because now we can convert that into a more general sum. We'll um, call it R sub n, where the only difference here is instead of going from i equals one to four, we're going from i equals one up to n, where n is sort of this arbitrary number of rectangles that we want to include here. And this is helpful because now we can we can put it this into a um, a tool such as Desmos, and it can it can crunch some some numbers for us, so we don't have to do some all that work that we just did um, for each of those f of x values. So here is our function f of x is x squared plus one plotted in Desmos, and recall we were trying to find estimate that area between um, x equals one and x equals three, and we're looking for the right endpoint estimate um, first of all, and that is shown graphically here. So since we can convert this into the summation notation, that, that's, that helps us get it into, into Desmos. And if you, um, I'll share this code at the end if you want to try and play with it and see where this, all this comes from, um, this notation here. But um, suffice to say, we put in this right endpoint estimate for n equals 4, and we get 12.75. 12 so our right endpoint estimate from our, what, what we did, earlier gave us 12.75 and now we're plugging into de in our Desmos summation tool and we're getting the same value. So that's good. Okay, we get the green check mark on this because our our um, our Desmos code matches what we got otherwise and now we can now we can know we can kind of trust the the code here. So what if we wanted to do a left endpoint estimate instead? Um, well we can go back to Desmos here. And so and I can just change my C value. I'm going to change that to zero. So now we have a left endpoint estimate. So we're using, this would be like the X sub zero value that we're using here. Here we're using X sub one, X sub two, and X sub three. And no, we're not, we're not using F of X sub four anymore. We're just using these for the first four X zero, X one, X two, and X three values to determine this area. Um, and as you can see now, since this is an increasing function, we we're going to get an underestimate this time. So our underestimate here you can see is 8.75. So that gives us our L sub 4 value, left endpoint estimate with four rectangles of 8.75. So that gives us sort of a range and we have an upper and lower bound that are the area of our actual function has to be greater than 8.75 but less than 12.75. And let's um let's take another look at this. And um, imagine if we had a decreasing function, say we called, made this negative here, maybe called that plus 5, or how about plus, how about plus 10. So now you can see in a, if we had a decreasing function, that left endpoint estimate is actually going to give us an overestimate, and if we did a right endpoint estimate, that is going to give us an underestimate. So um, you can't just say a right endpoint is always going to give you an over or underestimate. It depends on on the um, on the function and whether it's increasing or decreasing. But let's go back to our original function here, x squared plus one, and let's say we wanted to get a more accurate estimate here. What what could we do to make this a more get a more accurate estimate than our under our over and under estimates using left and right endpoints. Well, you may imagine that we could, instead of using left or right, we could use something in between. So um, if you see in this tool here, we can go down and change this to our C to 0 0.5, and that gives this will give us a midpoint estimate. And you can see that that is 10.625, which is right in the middle of this range here. So this is, turns out to be a much better estimate, because you, graphically you can see it's, it's not clear whether it's an over or under estimate. Um, 
the, um, the over and under estimate parts kind of offset each other. So this is much better. So that's one way you could get a better approximation. Um, another way, you could continue to use right endpoints, for example, and get a better approximation by increasing n. So if you make this something more reasonable, you can see that as I, as I increase n here, I have less and less of an overestimate because these, these, these portions that are over the line are getting smaller and smaller. So when I get really big N, you can see I'm, I'm getting a pretty good estimate because I'm not, I'm not, you can see I'm not overestimating too much. And if we bring this all the way out to 100,000, for example, you can see graphically it looks like we're getting, this is, looks like almost exact, like we're getting close to an exact value here if we make N really big. Um, if you go down here, you can see that we're getting close to 10.667, which um, turns out is the that is the actual value. Um, 10, point, uh, 10 and two thirds is the actual value, so we're getting close to that. And in this case, it doesn't it doesn't matter too much whether you're using right, left, or, or middle endpoints. You can see the value down here stays pretty um, relatively the, um, constant as you change this. But this kind of, this leads into into the integral, which we'll talk about next time. And the integral is basically an, an infinite Riemann sum. So if we take n um, instead of 100,000, if we take the limit of the summation as n approaches infinity, we get um, the integral here. And you can see if we if we take the actual integral, it's it is 10 and two thirds, which is which is what we get with our midpoint estimate with a really high value of n. But uh, more on the integral next time. Um, for this lesson, um, just to recap, we took the we use right endpoints and four rectangles to determine an overestimate of the area under the function f of x is x squared plus 1.